What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Game Over Greggy Show. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer, Skip me, get Nick Scarpino. Over there, the Pure One, Tim Geddes. The and the man having possibly the best week of his life, I imagine, up, Gary Witta. Thank you. Gary Witta, story by... That's co, your credit. Co-story. Co, yeah, John Noel. John Shout Noel out to him, too. And me. And you. And the story we're talking about, Rogue One, a Star Wars story. A Star Wars story. Yeah. See how that works? Yeah, I do. Story yeah, yeah, by yeah. Star Wars story. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. How you doing? What's life like right yeah, now? Yeah, first off, huge congratulations Thank to you and the team. You, you guys mm-hmm. absolutely Movie's awesome. killed this movie. I'm sure like the first thing it. you did last night was watch our reacts that went up at like 12.30 in the morning. Um, you're you know, brief actually, that we loved I, it. I did actually I spot it, it this video. morning, and I, I wanted to have time to watch it, because if these guys are like, you know, dumping on the movie, I'm not going to come over. Um, <laughs> that but, you get here, and it turns out we hate <laughs> Rogue One. <laughs> Ambush. Um... No, it's, I mean, it's, I, I don't even know what, it's surreal. I don't, honestly don't know what to do with myself. The last 48 hours have just been nuts. And that's what we want to get into today yeah. with you, of course. Thank yeah. you so much for coming. Uh, Patreon supporters, of course, get the show early. It's getting to you late. We usually put it up Thursday night or Friday morning. We're putting it up Friday night because we're recording it on Friday. Gary was nice enough to come in, do the show, get it out as fast as we can to you. Of course, that's the rigmarole. Patreon.com slash kind of funny. Get it early. Or mm-hmm. YouTube.com slash kind of funny where you can get it day by day. I think I still am a, a, a Patreon of you, I think. I think I still actually And I expect that to be money. going up. Going up now. These Rogue One Star Wars <laughs> right. checks are coming in. <laughs> it's like, Gary, I kind of feel like you could probably afford to give me a little more now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hitting you up on Patreon. Uh, a big thing. I mean, it's a week of big news for you. Accolades and all this thing. You are now the most visited Kind of funny game over Greggy show guest. This is, is your third right? appearance. Yeah, third appearance. This is the icing on the cake. Only because of volume, because I keep coming back. Right. Well, that's how returning guests work. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but that's, I, mean, I mean, it's one way to 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 achieve that. I guess just through attrition, just like keep yeah, doing exactly. It. Yeah, we you're, keep you're doing cool stuff. Come back. You know what I mean? Forcing people to watch. We had Aisha Tyler on. She's done nothing since. Career went nowhere. So we just said. So, I, so back, this is my third. T- you said you've never had a guest come back for a third time. Yeah, right. And what can what can we learn from that? Do you think? One of us is insane. But we're not yeah, sure yeah. Way. It seems like it. Ha- I mean, clearly, you and Colin can't be in the same room. People give you. They give you a shot, right? Yeah. They come back. Yeah, maybe not such a good experience. But they come back one more time. And they think, yeah, maybe it's getting better. Yeah. It ain't getting better. No. So they don't come back. Mm. But, be it, fair, but you know what? I gotta say, this is my first time here. This news is incredible. Thank you. Thank you. I I was actually quite. I was feeling quite bitter. Because I was thinking, wow, you know, Gareth, the director of the movie, Gareth was on Jimmy Kimmel. Ah. And I'm coming over here and, I, and I'm doing this. <laughs> I think, wow, like there's, that really shows you like the gulf between a director and a, a writer on a yeah. movie. But now this, but I'm here, I'm like, wow, this is like, this is almost like Kimmel. You're, right. You're like on your way. Now, almost I'm, like Kimmel. I'm going to put that on his box like quote. Yeah. We did bring holdovers from the, vi- oh the, the, the things God. that were the, your hind. Is this, the, now, is this still ed- edible? No, I looked at the top. Oh. This is Gary with a spotted dick that we forgot to eat but last surely time. surely. This went bad. This went bad January 2016. Surely that's just all the more reason to make a show out yeah, of you gotta it. try it sure oh, I, I mean Lord. i guess then i still have this one too the ambrosia and that's bad, too? Custer. That's yeah, this, went bad it. this went bad in uh yeah september 2016 so this is this is a shame because i guess the thing that we're known for is i bring you uh english delicacies yeah, to eat that's why i don't, you've been back I don't for have any this time yeah I we was gonna say like don't you still have the spotted dick but it's bad yeah but we i mean you get a pass this time around yeah right before got, you always come in else. you're just here to bullshit you wrote a book all right big deal you know yeah, you know all yeah. these different things you know what i tell you something as well i sold probably more copies of the book through my appearance on your show than i did any like in any other thing that i did so that's great here's what, what i want you to know i yeah. know the I mean, it was, so recording on Friday, it did the midnight releases last night. Mm-hmm. I know it was a rocky one that not a lot of people went and saw Rogue One last night. <laughs> I really think after this post on Patreon, number. I mean, if we it. come out of this and you're the number two or number one grossing movie of the weekend, it's I'm hoping us. that this that this podcast is fi- is the, it finally gets the word out. Yeah, that there's people, a Star Wars yeah. movie. Oh, yeah. 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 And it's national. I don't know why this joke stuck with me. It's not that great. I like it. And it's national French fry week. Hopefully, this will really help get the word out about French fries. <laughs> I thought that was a good joke. And yeah, Star Wars. Obviously, they spend a lot of money, and uh, you know, it's Star Wars, so people find it. And yeah, you know, it's, I don't think we have an awareness problem. No, need, you're doing pretty good. So let's just clarify. I don't need to be here at all. No, you're just doing that because you're here a best out friend. Of the goodness and my friendship to yeah. you, and you know, the audience. They've been good to you. You're paying it back to them too. Yeah. They were super. Uh, that's been the. I think. For me, one of the fun moments, like you're talking about, you sold so many copies of the book when you came on, uh-huh. but people like legitimately love you. That's the reason you're back for a no, third that's one. Not, that's not it. It is. The audience does. And the amount of the audience that I've seen tweet at you or include us for no reason at all <laughs> of I just finished Rogue One and thank you so much and da da da. And they're talking yeah, to you because they know
I've got some stuff to give away. Do you want to do this now? Yeah. Feels Whatever right. you want to do, yeah. Um, Who are you giving it away to? Like, you can, I mean, I'm giving it to you. Okay. And then you can do with it, I mean, you can wear it and keep it yourself if you want. But or we can give it to them, you're saying? Yeah, it might be nice no, Kevin, to give it away. Kevin's saying no. Do you? I mean, do you have a a, 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 a conduit, a model to give stuff away? Oh, yeah. We have a process to give things yeah. away. Yes. All right, so then then, uh, then, great. You want me to give you some Walk stuff? me through what you got here. All right, so look, I, I pulled this. I wanted to bring you something. I pulled it together at the last minute. Now, I don't have Thanks for thinking any of real cool stuff from the movie, like Gareth. Gareth had... Can we talk about like things that are in the movie? First of all, do we great assume point. that people, Great question. Do we assume that people have seen the movie? I would say, I would venture to guess that by like 99% of the kind of funny audience will have seen Rogue One by the time this post Monday on YouTube. So right. if you're early, maybe hold off. But let's also just say there may be spoilers. Uh, just that's what I'm saying. Gonna be There's going to be 100% spoilers yeah. in this. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, right. everybody. Um, I'm not. Well. Okay. So, <laughs> so that said, all right, yeah. let's start with some, like, this, this is what I was able to, like, so my, my point being. Yeah. Gareth, for example, has, for as a souvenir from the movie, he has the actual Death Star plants. He has the, the cartridge that she pulls sure. out of the thing. What? Sure. Um, that's like, he has it. He has the actual prop. Um, I don't have anything that cool. Um, <laughs> they didn't give you the, like, the crystal? The necklace? No, I, would, I mean, that would have been great, right? I, I, you know, there was a point where I did it, you know, you're in the pine wood in the prop room and everything is there, like all this amazing stuff. Like the first time I saw that wooden. The chessboard, the wooden chessboard, mm -hmm. yeah, the holographic yeah, yeah, chessboard, yeah. the wooden characters. I was like, oh my god, this is amazing! Like that, when you see it up close, like oh my god, it's like that's so finely, beautifully sculpted and just perfect. Like everything in these movies, like even like, a lot of times when you work on movies and TV shows, like you see a prop or a costume up close, you go, oh, I can kind of see how it's kind of fake. On Star Wars movies, that's not like like right up close. You go, oh my god, this right. is like real. Like there's it, there's so perfectly crafted and like they put so much attention to detail into it. But anyway, my point, I don't have anything good, um, <laughs> but. I have a few things. I thought this was kind of weird. So you remember how I used to hang out with the giant bomb and guys and before you, media? Before, and before you moved before up I, to us, yeah. Before I moved, I graduated to you guys. So I used to do a thing where I would sit with Ryan Davis and Jeff Gersman and those guys, they would play video games and I'd yeah. be on the couch and um, and I would help them. I'd, I would, and my thing was shoot that guy. Do you remember this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to say shoot that guy. Like that was my pro tip, my, Bra my Brady games Guy, putting all that, all those years being a PC guy, yeah. running this magazine. Yeah. That's what you yeah. learned. Shoot I, that guy. After many years as a games journalist, like, if you see a guy in a video game, shoot him. You should yeah. probably yeah. shoot yeah. him. Actually, he's probably not your friend. He's probably going to shoot you mm -hmm. if you don't shoot him first. Yeah. So shoot that guy. That was my. That became, Solid I guess, advice. my Catch my, my thing. Yeah. And so at some point they made these T-shirts, which are now you can't get these anymore. No, these are limited editions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they did these kind of this uh, this kind of blockhead. Character of course, you have your iPhone because you are one of the biggest Apple people yeah, anyone's so ever met iPhone, in the world. And uh, you'll notice here that the shadow is kind of a little uh, reference to oh. the episode one poster. Yeah, the Darth Vader foreshadowing. Uh, shadow, which in. In its own way, ended up being quite foreshadowy. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I ended up working on a movie with Darth, uh, Darth Vader. In. Yeah, yeah. So I have some of these in different uh, sizes. Okay, that I'm thank happy you. To give to you. They were just cluttering up my house. Oh well, you, well, so you, you say it like these. that, it sounds like we're goodwill. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is going in order. I'm going to hide this over here because okay. the coolest thing I'm going to say for last. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Um, this is kind of cool. So this is, um, so my this. wife, this is awesome. She started an Etsy store recently and she sells, she makes and sells stuff. She's got a little craft business. Give, give it the I, pin? Should, I should plug it. Yeah, plug. you should. It's plug called it Scotty and Min. So S C O T T Y ampersand M I N. And I don't remember what she called it that, but she sells, you know, little t-shirts and things and she's crafty and you know, it, it's going well. It's yeah. good. Um, and she made this. So this is a pizza destroyer. It's a slice of pizza. Pepperoni pizza that's also a Star Destroyer. I don't know how well you can see that. Oh, Sky Cam! You put it right here. Lay it oh, over okay. here. We go, we go right. to the top cam. So. Other way around. Uh, like this? Yeah, because right. then okay. it'll be right side up for everybody. All right, okay. Kevin doesn't have the technology I, to rotate yeah, this, cameras. This there you amazing. go. See? Okay, Look see, at that. Oh, that's really great. Okay, so here's the cool thing about this, though. This is um, a Pablo Hidalgo original. Do you know who Pablo Hidalgo is? No, it sounds I sound so, like I should know that name. And you, and you should, and you're going to. Uh, so Pablo is a member of the um, what they call a story group at Lucasfilm. Okay. He's one of the guys who keeps it all together and makes sure that anything that happens in the TV show doesn't contradict what's in the movies. And that's why one of the reasons why like cool little Easter eggs from Star Wars Rebels and Clone Wars are in Rogue One. Pablo is the guy who kind of makes sure that that all is in fits continuity and works and, works and is right canon. Uh, and he is just like he's the guy. Like if you ever had like if you if like aliens landed on Earth and said, right, we're going to do Star Wars trivia for the fate of the human race. Pablo is the guy you would put up. Sure. 
right? He's the guy. I don't know anyone in the world who's more knowledgeable. About I feel Star like they would have enslaved him to make the trivia, though. Uh, let's not go. To, like, okay, sorry, my bad. You're, you're the writer. I, I, what I, am I saying? That, that's you're a right. good point, but let's not go down that tangent. Um, I had uh, uh, my wife and I had pizza uh, with uh, with As Pablo and his wife recently, and uh, and he sketched this little thing on a box, and we liked it, and so we scanned it in. And uh, we made it. Made, uh, made so a you just out stole of it. his art, and now you're making money off. Yes, of it. and we're going to sell it on the Etsy store. But a portion of the proceeds from the sale of the shirts are going to go to a local dog rescue charity Aww. that Pablo supports. Okay. So now, there you go. See, Full you got, you got ahead Full of yourself, circle. and you realize it was actually cool. I just um, want to nail you. But I have this one. <laughs> I have this one to give away. Awesome. All right. Yeah. You want to hear? The, you want? You want the coolest part? Yes. yes I, I don't do. know if this is actually cool or not, but this is the only thing I was able to get from the movie. An actual, from Rogue an One. actual thing from the film that I'm going to give to you. Okay. All right. Okay. So and maybe it's lame. But may, I don't it's know. It's not lame. But I we'll can see. tell you already it's not lame. So third act of the movie, Scarif, the Imperial base, is a big so battle on the beach. Awesome. Rick Saving Private Ryan got a battle on the, on the beach. All right. So this is actual sand <laughs> from Scarif. Oh, it's so coarse That's and it gets awesome. everywhere. This is the, yes, right? Don't you just hate sand? Yeah. It gets everywhere. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is real sand that where I was on the beach at Scarif, which is actually a place called Bovingdon in Southern England. And I okay. think they also shot in like somewhere tropical. But I was there when I was on set. I was, I was on Scarif for a while. And I remember thinking, they're not going to give me anything good. So I just scooped some sand up into a jar. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes. And this is some of it. I, I, I emptied out a little bit and I'm giving it to you. To give to them. To give to whoever you Thank want. Thank you so that's much. Like, oh, here, that's Sky a real piece of a Star Wars planet right there. That is amazing. Yeah. And I, awesome. I assume this is in a real vanilla bean jar you used at your house. Yes. You used all that's this vanilla authentic. bean. We used all of it. I actually, yeah, we had to eat a lot of vanilla just to <laughs> free up the jar to bring you this sand. <laughs> well, we thank you very much for that. That's awesome. So, again, I don't know if that's a cool thing or that's not. Awesome. Like, that's, that's awesome. Totally that's awesome. That's, 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 that's what I have. So I you can that. you can organize whatever uh, giveaway for these items you uh, as you see fit. That's my gift to you. Thank you. Come here. Oh, Congratulations. My first instinct is I'm like, I want to put that on the set. I know. But no, we'll <laughs> but I'm like, we can a little bit. Guys, we, we can go to any Safeway and get the vanilla bean organic jar. Yeah. And just um, send them that. They just, will or the whole just do what drug dealers do. Get some regular sand and cut it. There you go. There you go. That's true. That's good. Just keep this and put it in the hardware store. Get some regular sand. Put a little bit in there. Yeah, nailed it. It's like people are going like, I feel as Star Wars as I thought it would. It's not giving that same percent Earth sand. Yeah, it's from Ocean Beach. So I want to get into Star Wars stuff. I have something to say to you. Some news? Yes, some, some news. Uh, it's a, cr- a congratulation to you. Thank because you. obviously this thing, this thing is amazing. Love the movie. First off, how cool is it that there are a ton of people out there saying this is their favorite Star Wars movie ever? Coming after the prequels, coming after a lot of issues, coming after all the, the talk of people. There's true Star Wars fans that are saying this is Star Wars. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's really quite overwhelming. And, and I should preface anything I'm going to say by first of all saying like it's really... Um, it's it's it, in a way almost uncomfortable for me to you know, my my social feed and everything's kind of melted down in the in the last forty eight hours, and I really tried to make a point as I'm going to now as when I respond to people on Twitter and Facebook to say like I'm just a teeny tiny piece of this film. Sure. Um, you know I'm one of several writers that worked on the film. Um, and you know when you it like it takes fifteen minutes for the credits to roll. A lot of people work <laughs> on this film. Um, you know, and obviously Gareth and Kathy and all the producers and the cast and crew and everyone that animates all the droids and everything is like, it's just a vast, vast effort. And so, and my piece of it, I'm incredibly proud to be a piece of it, but just a small piece. And I try to always try to make that point that I'm just a small piece, but it is, uh, the single greatest privilege in my life to be a part of this film and, and Star Wars history, cause that's what it is now. Um, and yeah, it was really, um, it's been, it's, it, I honestly don't know what to do with myself. It's, it's, it, I did two movies before this uh, that, you know, maybe some people saw or maybe some people didn't. Book of Eli. Ca- in, in Book of Eli and After Earth. Yep. So in some cases, maybe better if you didn't see it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I say it, I say it's weird. Like I said, it, 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 it's, it's weird. Your career as a screenwriter goes from like, I remember there were many years where I was trying to break in and like you meet someone at a party. Oh, I'm a screenwriter. Oh, really? What have you written? And you're nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm working on it. Yeah, I'm working on it, but people are like, oh, well, you're not, you know, unless you've actually done something that's made, like Mm -hmm. how are you a real screenwriter? But like for many years, that's the struggle. Um, Somebody told me once a great answer for that. If someone says to you, like, you're a screenwriter, you haven't anything made, and someone says, have you you written anything I would have seen? The correct answer is, 
I don't know. What have you seen? Smart. Right? Put it on yeah. them. Make them the Bit asshole. Bit of a dick move, but, you know, again. Pro maneuver. A lot of screenwriters are dicks, so it comes mm-hmm. very natural. They are. So, so, I went, so I went through years of that to then saying, oh, I, I wrote a movie called The Book of Eli with Denzel Washington. And people go, oh, and some people go, oh, I've seen that. Or some people say, oh, I've heard of it. Or Saw the people Bill I haven't seen it. The weirdest thing about this one is, is working on something that you know that everyone will see. Everyone in the world is <laughs> going to see this movie. Mm-hmm. And, and the rea- like I said, the reaction to it, and, be- and not just the fact that everyone's going to see it, but it's something that's so special to so many people, right? I mean, Star Wars really genuinely means something to oh, yeah. our generation and to, you know, uh, new kids coming up. And it's really amazing. I, uh, I was at a screening last night. And, and when uh, you say screening, this is what I, I mean. I follow you. We're friends. So you say screening, you mean you went and bought a ticket to go see your movie I in was a, a century, cinema. I went to a Century Theater. I wanted to see it with a real paying crowd. Yeah. And it was, it was that, but it was organized by a bunch of friends. They bought like a ton. They basically bought out almost the entire theater. But they're all legit, hardcore Star Wars, like mostly I think game industry people and friends of friends. But like they were all like super hardcore Star Wars nerds. And that's the audience that I wanted to see. Yeah. You were sort of the premiere and the premiere is great, but there's a lot of kind of poses and, you know, celebs and, you know, kind of people that just want to go to a movie premiere. I wanted to see it with like our people. Like sure. The nerds, yep. the ones that got bullied at school, like mm. though, and like Star Wars for them was like their escape. Um, people like me. And I wanted to see it with those guys. And it was the biggest thrill of my life to sit there. Like it's the second time I've seen it. So what you do is first time you watch the movie, the second time you watch the audience, watch the movie. And you watch for those reactions. And when little moments happen, whether it's like a twist or a reveal or an Easter egg or a familiar character shows up and you watch that kind of, that little ripple goes through mm-hmm. the audience, you get a chill. You go, oh, shit, that's so cool. And, um, and afterwards, people were, you know, coming up and like hugging me. And people literally like crying, like fucking emotional. Like really, like, just so, because it's like, it's Star Wars and it's the Star Wars that we grew up with. It's the, it's the original trilogy. It's like, you know, the movie takes place literally like 48 hours before a new hope. I mean, it's right there in that zone. Uh, so it's the Star Wars that my generation grew up with. Um, I've said before, it's the most expensive Star Wars fan film ever made. Yeah, in a and way. it feels like that. That's, that's exactly I, that's what awesome. it is. And that you know, and, and that's you know, because George sold it, and it kind of opened the door for other filmmakers mm-hmm. to come along. And it started with JJ, who's you know roughly the same age as me. That's where it started, right? That this, that this generation of filmmakers that grew up watching A New Hope and Empire, and go, I want to do that, I want to make that for a living. Whatever it is that I'm feeling right now, I want to make people feel like that. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's how I started when I watched those movies. And now we're all grown up and Star Wars is now in the hands of you know, Disney and Lucasfilm and they've invited other filmmakers to come in and play. So we get to make the movies now. So they are, they are in, a, in a weird way, they're, fan, they're just very expensive canonical fan films, but they're, made, they're coming from a place of, People who, like me, froze their Han Solo figure in the freezer and <laughs> freeze him in carbonite. And Naturally. Gareth, who dragged his girlfriend to Tunisia to drink blue milk, you know, for his birthday because that's what he wanted to do. <laughs> um, you know, these are like the hardcore fans. And, and, and to, to be able to contribute a piece of it and then see how that, like I said, how I want to make other people feel like that. And I saw it last night. I saw people coming out of the theater feeling that way. I got choked up. And again, saying it even just me as a tiny piece of it. Just knowing that this movie has has the power to have that effect on people, like kids and grown ups and people of all ages, it was magic. It was just pure ma- magic. Magic, I think, is really the the best way to explain it. There was a point in the movie where, when I first saw it the first time, where it was. A You've seen it more than once. Twice now. Oh, good yeah. for you. Uh, where uh, it halfway through, I looked over at Kevin and I was like, "This movie's fucking awesome." <laughs> and from the moment after that, like the last forty minutes of the movie, it was just pure magic and. One of the coolest things Everyone for me, talks about the last 40 minutes. It's, and, and then the last five. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, so, but like the last 40 God. was, was the, the magic was there. Magic oh is the God. right it's word. A, and isn't it ex- cool? It's exhausting, right? Like I, you know, And even the first time I saw it, I know everything that's going to happen in the film. And I'm sitting there like, are they going to get away? What's going to happen? Are they going to live? Are they going to die? Like you, get caught, you cannot help get caught up in it. It's mm-hmm. amazing. But my favorite thing about it, though, and going back to the fan film thing, going back to the magic, is years ago, before... Uh, like when you, we knew you were writing a Star Wars movie, you came on the show and we were talking. The topic was Star Wars. Yeah, this has been going on for years. Yeah. Right? It takes yeah, yeah, a long yeah. time to make a movie. Yeah, and and you were here and we were talking and the topic was Star Wars and what's our favorite Star Wars? It was I think was the topic. And, and real quick, was that before we knew? Because I, I remember, I mean, I've been around. You, it, it, was it was Cloak and Dagger for I don't know so if long. It even at that point, even you'd have to go back and look if it even announced like what the film. Exactly, was. we didn't. There was rumors that it there was, was the a heist space to between get the thing. it being announced that I was working on it yeah. and then the reveal that it was the death. Okay, okay. Yeah, because that was the whole. We didn't know. Okay, because I remember. 
of that being close. Sorry for this quick aside, but I, I love the cloak and dagger nature that we find. And then when we finally find out, but I'll never forget when you were telling me about it or whatever. And I don't remember if it was on a show or we were just talking somewhere else, but you're like, when you got the, you'd been waiting, waiting, waiting. And they finally sent you like the pitch or whatever for what you'd be. And, you had oh, sign up, yeah. and you got it and you were like, this went to the wrong person. This yeah, can't be what I was they working. They sent it to me. Yeah. I still think they, you know, they were like they just did, they felt embarrassed taking it back. They're like, well, shit, you've seen it now. <laughs> let them do it. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, Sorry, I di- I took I derailed. So, what, so you're what was awesome is you came and we were talking. We we're talking about Star Wars and we we're talking about our favorite Star Wars movies. And you were saying that you're like my favorite thing in all of Star Wars yeah. is the end of Return of the Jedi. Oh my god! When there's the the three plane scene going yeah, the on, three, where there's yeah. the space battle, there's yeah. the Endor, there's the um, yeah. the Luke and the Emperor in yeah. the, the see a little bit of that in Rogue One, did going you? that, and then <laughs> as right? I'm seeing it happen, it I I got so much chills watching it because it's like my my first instinct was. This is amazing. My second instinct was, this is the Star Wars magic that I, I mm-hmm. thought I would never get get again after watching Force Awakens and having that first like, oh, this is happening and this is good. Right. But I got it again, and then there was that third level of like, this is what Gary was talking about a long time ago, and that's so oh, fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, you like it's so track cool that it, it's yeah. just like, I don't know, because that, that the the end of Jedi is amazing, and getting yeah. this, it's like I Jedi, think you know, I, I gotta say again, perfect. Jedi for some reason, people give it grief, Ewoks or whatever it is, I will defend it to the day I die and particularly that third act, the, the editing between the battle in space, the battle around the mm-hmm. bunker on the ground, and then, you know, kind of the personal battle between Luke and Vader and the Emperor the way those three pieces are cut together and they all kind of inform each other, you know, the shield goes, yeah, they, they drop the shield, so now they can go inside the Death Star, and then, you know, the de- they, they hit the reactor, so Luke's gotta get Vader you know, gotta get him out of there, and, you know, he saves his son, and, like, the way it all just all the pieces kind of connect together, like I was first time I saw it as a kid, like I blubbed like a baby, just overwhelmed by the emotion and the spectacle of it all. And certainly, yeah, I mean, you know, that's you know, it, each again, Gareth has parts of Star Wars that he loves. I have parts that I love. Chris and Tony and John, all the other people that writers that worked on it, all bring a little bit of bit of their like. This is what I love about Star Wars, and this is what I want to bring. And you know, certainly the kind of the um, uh, kind of the interconnected. Uh, you know, back and forth, ground and space nature of the of the battle at the end of Rogue One is uh, there's some Jedi influence in there for sure. Yeah, yeah and there's definitely some, there's definitely some stuff in there that you're like, okay, I know, I kind of understand how this is gonna you know boil down, how everything's gonna happen, and then uh, I guess we're spoiling shit. We're spoiling when the uh, was it a Corvette, the, the hammerhead. hammerhead Corvette pushes the de- the the destroyer oh. into the. Oh my god, I was like. Come on, dude. That is the best fucking way to break that shield. Let's go, son. Um, and, but, I, and so and cause there's a perfect example for me to do what I love to do and say, that's not me. And, and that was a different writer that added that. I wrote the original version of the space battle, but then all the little logistics, at least like each writer comes on and adds right. little things that, you know, you know, I think I had like a Star Destroyer crash in my version, but mm-hmm. then they found like, a like, again, another writer comes on and you'll be cooler. Do it this way, yeah, and then they, and they keep adding and keep making it better. But so that's that's the thing that that I like so much about it, right? It was like you guys talk about the end of, of Return of the Jedi. We had three movies to care about those characters, right? We had three movies to care about the fate of them. Yeah, this one you guys were able You're to get do, one shot at it. Yeah, yeah, two hours. You guys were able to do this within two hours, and not only that, you were able to make us care about characters that we you go into knowing pretty well that they're not. It's not going to turn Is that out what so you, well did for you, them. Did you think that? I assumed that. I wanted that. You didn't think they were going to. Get away? No, I wanted that. I wanted their 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 journey to kind of end there. You know, I, right. I when when you saw them talking to each other and you saw that they basically had their entire lives taken away from them, and this is their one shot to sort of redeem that, do something worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. and I liked and the character dynamics for me really good, and I think um, uh, uh, Diego Luna and Felicity Jones they're great, it. like they're oh great, God. right? Acting, I mean, like um, so good chemistry good. between them, but yeah. also just the right amount, right? They were still aloof for each other the entire time until that last scene, until that last moment. There's a where moment kind of like where they're coming down in the elevator at yeah. the end. It's beautiful, yeah. And a lot of people kind of look at that as a romantic moment. I didn't. I looked at that as sort of like a, we finally kind of, this is it, we did it, we understand each yeah, other. Yeah, it's camaraderie. We're the same person, yeah. it's camaraderie, right? Yeah. And there is a mutual affection there, but it's also the mutual affection knowing that you're about to get hit by a nuclear blast and that's it for you. But, it, um, but it, you know, it's like, you know, one of the things um, I remember, one of my favorite moments in, movies is when Maximus dies at the end of Gladiator. Mm-hmm. And it's okay that he dies because he's done the one thing that he was still around, stay, basically the only thing he was staying alive to do, which was kill Commodus right. and, and get revenge for his family so he can be reunited with them. 
It's a, it's a beautiful death. Like it's almost not you're like you cry. It's beautiful, but you're not sad. It's like the right ending for the character. Mm-hmm. But kudos, but kudos to the team for allowing that to happen, right? Because you don't see that that in this day and age with a lot of movies, especially a lot of movies that you're we're hoping have more iterations, right? Mm-hmm. Um, with Rogue One, obviously, you can't really like the natural sequel is, of course, you know, a new hope. Like, I mean, it's one of the one of one of the one of the benefit, and not just in Star Wars, but one of the benefits of like a self-contained story that doesn't have to be part of like an ongoing thing is your characters can. But I can understand they can, they can, they can have an end point. I can understand sitting around a table though, as a, as a group of, of producers and executive producers, thinking like, "Do we want these? Like, these are going to be characters that we love. Can we utilize them somewhere else?" It's not to say we can't ever see them again. Obviously, if we do, if, if God forbid, there's more prequels that happen, they can come back. But they're not going to be like we're not going to see an old Jyn Orso. We're, we're just not going to see that. But you know, and again, it's interesting. They will, um, you know, they might. There's like Jen's got this really. I find it fascinating that gap that when she would, when she was with Guerrero, right? Like, what were those so there's stuff like? that could happen. So though, yeah, I mean, sure. and, and again, they have this. That doesn't have to be a film. That could be a novel, a comic book, TV series. Sure. There's all kinds of different say, ways they, can, they, they fill in those blanks in all kinds of interesting ways. Yeah. But I mean, you know, and again, kudos to you guys because she felt she felt like a real character and she felt like an original character. Which and there's been a lot of characters in Star Wars and a lot of characters we've seen lately. And she just, I mean, she nailed it. Like, yeah, Felicity's so good. She's so good in the film. I mean, that's what I felt like, you know, that all the characters felt original. I didn't, you know, when you're watching it, I wasn't getting vibes of, I mean, there's vibes, but in terms of like the new droid K or whatever, right? Like, I love him. He's awesome. He's everyone's and, favorite droid now. Like, oh, yeah, night. totally. Totally. Uh, yeah, it's an amazing yeah, thing. I'll tell you one thing. One, one of the things <laughs> get I, I, I get out of here. And I, I, liked, I liked Force Awakens, but the particular things that I really liked, and one of them was, you know, because again, that's tough. I think JJ had the d- toughest job of all, right? Like, back in, first back in. Mm-hmm. Right, and mm-hmm. you've got to kind of like the reset, the reset, um, you know. And like again, my personal read on it, the very first line that, that, that any character mm-hmm. says in this the film is, the is "This, this will begin right. to make things right." And I, yes. you know, my read, I don't know for sure, but my read is like, "Oh, that's JJ kind of saying like, we're back, let's heal." <laughs> yeah. Um, and one of the one of the things I give him credit for, and this is incredible, he created a droid. And him, ILM, and everyone else that worked on it created a droid as iconic as R2-D2 and as well-loved, like, right out of the gate. Like, people love BB-8 right away. And, and, and it's kind of crazy. I didn't see it. I mean, I always knew he was, he was always one of my favorite characters, but I didn't know people were going to freak out for K the way that K-2SO is. Like, people come in with me last night saying he's my favorite droid now. I like, okay. I mean, there's some good droids in Star Wars, but the fact that he's now a lot of people's favorite immediately is amazing. Well, he was, again, it's, and, and you know, I mean this, in, and we've sent away as a compliment. You you were able to give us just enough familiarity for us to be like, okay, it's a droid. We get that. We get what this is going to be. This is sort of the the old school buddy droid to the to right. the hero. And then take it a step further with this one being kind of an asshole the entire time. And be time. a droid we I, that at least for me, I don't think we ever see right. right. He where he, he hits the guy and he's talking yeah, yeah, back yeah. and like that yeah. fucking scene where he's oh yeah, I should have stayed on the ship, whatever. And they throw the grenade and he just catches it and tosses yeah. it back. Yeah, that was like, awesome. Fucking yes, uh, yeah. and it was comic relief that worked. And yeah, I think that that's the, much the most important thing is because like he was the Jar Jar of this movie, except done right. You know, and well, that's yeah. like that's the good thing is like this is how it should have been. Right. That, that's the thing of why, like I mean, I'm excited to see it again because for me I felt it all really it all fell into place when, when we're in the last 40 minutes like we're yeah. talking about like when, when that starts and that's when I was like oh I see how it's all working together and who they are and this is awesome bot and their deaths meant something to me so I want to go back of course to now know more about them from the beginning be more invested as like I know who everybody's going to be and who they are and how their relationship is but then to hear the lines that come after every K line because he would say stuff and the, our theater would erupt yeah. and I know, you, you see you, Miles you, moving around I'm like I don't know what they're gotta, you, yeah, it's one of those movies where you've almost got to I, I spoke to um, Anthony Daniels at the premiere, who plays C-3PO. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he just has that one moment in the movie. And, uh, and I said, how cool that you're in, like, we, you know, you're in the film. That, you know, you're in this, even though you might not expect to see those characters because it's not a saga film. How great that 3PO and R2 are in the film. And, um, and he said, yeah, the only bummer for me is, like, when people see me, they cheer so much they don't get to hear my line. <laughs> and, and it's true. And, it, and we went and, and twice now, I've seen the film. You can barely hear what, no he what he says because as soon as people yeah. see him, it just erupts. Um, and, you know, that, I guess, testament to the popularity of those, those characters. 100%. But, yeah, it might be like and, uh, however many weeks it is down the road we can finally go see the movie in a half-empty theater or you get it on Blu-ray. They'll actually hear every What's line and on? every little... Because there's so many little cues a lot of the easter eggs in the film are audio easter eggs like just a little something in the background mm-hmm. that you hear yeah what were you talking about you were talking about easter eggs for like rebels and all these different what are some of the ones that stand out to you that's not for me to tell you god damn it <laughs> they're easter eggs Greg. yeah, yeah there's, there's so many there's so many like cool things like, that i noticed and watching it a second time i was just like mm-hmm. 
There is even more, and I'm sure there'll be a ton of list videos in the line and stuff. And I, that's the type of stuff I don't want to spoil. If they only have your own moments, because that's I think those are the really cool things. Finding the Easter eggs is fun, and like again, it's one of the reasons why I think a movie like that is great to go back and see again. And I'm talking to people I've already seen it like three or four times. It's not, it technically only opens tonight, right? <laughs> just from previews, like people have seen it three or four times yeah. already. Yeah. How many more and times do you expect to see it? I so I've seen it twice now. I'm seeing it again tonight, again on Monday. And uh, I'm seeing it with my uh, with my wife's family uh, over the holiday, nice. so that'll be oh, that's five. So cool. Maybe that maybe that's enough. Sure, okay. <laughs> maybe. But no, the nice see. again, no. the nice the first time you're sitting there, right? Again, even someone like me who knows everything that's going to happen in the film before it happens, I'm sitting there. The, 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 the premiere is my first time seeing it finished. All the wires had and you CG seen stuff beforehand? Removed. Though? Did they? Were, did I'd they show seen you it. Some in, stuff I'd before? seen bits and pieces. Okay. But I'd not really seen like a complete cut of it i'd seen and everything that i'd seen was like cg's not finished or mm -hmm, you know sure. you can still see the wires or whatever um or it hasn't it doesn't have the final soundtrack so um at the premiere was the first time i saw the finished complete you know pristine film and uh again even knowing what's gonna happen before it happens i'm sitting there like as a fan just being like i was sitting next to chris white who's one of the other writers on the film and we were just like this yeah, like <laughs> honestly, the whole time, like we just could not. We were just geeking out, big time. Like, so here's a again a minor spoiler, minor Easter egg. Um, you know, I knew they were in there, but I didn't know how they were going to do it. The first time I saw Red Leader and Gold Leader in mm -hmm. the movie, I lost my shit. I was like, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> they did that. And it's <laughs> just amazing. I, I again, a lot of this stuff you don't know what they exactly what they're doing. Like, again, I knew those characters were in the film, but I didn't know, is it going to be someone that looks like the guy? Is it going to be this? Is it going to be that? And mm -hmm. they found a way to do it that is just, again, magic. Like, it belongs in the film. It's just incredible how they do that.